Hi everyone, Miss Curdy here, um, and today we're going to be talking about 14-1, time to the nearest minute. Um, time should be a review for most of you because you did cover it in second grade, but it's always helpful to kind of uh, relook at a topic that's a little bit older, something we've done in the past. You will notice I don't have my usual note sheet in front of me, um, so we're going to be using the whiteboard to help us out. I do have a little clock and then also a dry erase board to help us get through these um, notes. I do want you to be looking at that note sheet because I'm going to be referring to it throughout the entire video. The first thing I want you to notice at the top of your note sheet, hi bud, at the top of your note sheet, it reminds you of some important facts. Um, first off, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. One minute is equal to 60 seconds and one day is equal to 24 hours. And this information is definitely going to come in handy throughout topic 14. I know why, I know. So keep that in mind. Um, the next trick I want to show you is just helpful to remember which hand is our minute hand and which hand is our hour hand. Um, and the way I like to think about it is minute is a longer word and it would fit on the longer line hour is a shorter word so it would go on the shorter of the hands on the clock and we call them hands um, i know an hour lasts longer than a minute um, but i like to think about it as how long the word is so our minute hand is the longer line and our hour hand is the shorter line just a little tip all right we'll keep that in mind all right, now when we're telling time, there's actually three different ways to say it. The one that we're most familiar with is the digital time. So when you look at a digital clock, you will see a time like what's on your note sheet, 941. And writing it in the digital way is just like this. It's the most common way and it's probably the easiest way. So that is our digital time. So on that line, we're going to write 941. And when we write the digital time, that first number, the nine is our hours. And then we have our colon here. And then here we have our minutes, which is 41 minutes. Now, another way that we can tell time is the time after the hour, how many minutes have already passed um, past that hour. You'll hear a lot of adults use this type of um, way to tell time. So for example, for 941, we can also say it's 41 minutes past nine o'clock, 41 minutes past nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that down as well. Um, and I want you to do the same. Forty-one minutes past nine, um, and then the third way we can tell time is we can actually say how many minutes it will be until the next hour. Usually, we tell the time after the hour when it's not that far past that hour, and then the time before the next hour when we're almost at that next hour. So the way we do that is we need to think if we are at nine forty-one, how many more minutes will it be until we get to ten o'clock? Um, so that's some math that we can do in our head, or we can also do some simple math off to the side to see how many more minutes we need. I know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. And we've already gone through 41 of those minutes, so I'm going to do some regrouping and subtraction. And again, this is math we can do in our head, um, but you can always jot a little subtraction problem down on the side. So now I know it's 19 minutes to 10, 19 minutes until we get to 10 o'clock. So I'm also going to write that down um, on the line. I would like you to do the same. So in 19 minutes, it'll be 10 o'clock, 19 minutes until 10 o'clock. All right. So a couple of things I want to point out when we are telling time. So we know that we've got 
our numbers one through 12 on the clock, um, even though there are 24 hours in a day, because we know that there are two one o'clocks, an AM and a PM, two two o'clocks, two three o'clocks, and so on and so forth. Um, but we only show that those 12 numbers, and then as the clock turns, we'll know if it's AM or PM. Um, another thing to keep in mind, the only time the hour hand is directly on an hour is when it is exactly nine o'clock. As soon as we start moving that um, minute hand, our hour hand will also start to move off of um, that hour. I like to think about it kind of like um, our age on our ninth birthday, the day we wake up on our ninth birthday, we are exactly nine. But the next day when we wake up, we're no longer exactly nine. We're nine in one day. And the day after that, we're nine in two days until we get six months later when we're actually nine and a half. Um, and every day we get closer and closer to being 10 years old. Time works a lot like that, where right now we are exactly nine o'clock. And as I move my clock around to 9.15, you'll notice the hour hand is no longer exactly on the nine. It started making its journey towards 10 o'clock. Um, the closer we get to 10 o'clock, the closer that hour hand will move towards that 10. And you'll notice it is not on 10 o'clock yet, but it is super close because our minute hand tells us that we're very, very close to 10 o'clock. Now kids reading this will say, oh, we're almost at the 10, so it must be 10.55. Um, but that's not accurate. We're not 10 o'clock until we're right on the 10 and then even in the space between the 10 and the 11. So right now it is still nine o'clock, but it's 9.55. So we're only five minutes away from that 10 o'clock, which is why our hour hand is so close. So that is something to be really careful at, um, careful about when telling time. Don't fall into that little trap of seeing an hour hand really close to an hour and thinking we've already hit that hour. Um, let's look at another one. Take a look at this time at the clock. Now I notice that we're very, very close to that two o'clock, but we're not there yet. So I know it's not two o'clock yet. It is still one o'clock. And then I can look at my minute hand to see that we're at 150, which is close to two o'clock. And that's why my hour hand is so close to two. So be very careful with that. A lot of kids will say it's 250, um, but that would be a whole hour off the actual time because we're not at two o'clock yet. All right, take a look at this time. Give yourself a moment and think about what that time would be. Look at your hour hand, what hour are we at, and then our minute hand to see what minutes we are at. And remember our minutes count by fives. So the one right here is five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20. Um, our six is all the way down at 30 minutes and so on and so forth. So take a moment, see if you can tell what time this is. Feel free to pause the video if you need to. All right, so taking a look at this, I noticed that um, my hour hand is really close to that five o'clock. So I'm tempted to say it's five something, um, but I know if I'm close to the five, but not on it yet, it is still somewhere in um, the four o'clock hour. So I'm gonna, I know it's four o'clock. And then when I look at my minute hand, I can see that we are at the seven, which is 35 minutes. So the time on this clock right now is 4.35. All right. So now that we've gone over that second side of the note sheet about how to tell time, um, we are going to do a little practice. So at the bottom of your note sheet, there are two clocks. Um, the first clock shows this time. So I want to take a moment to figure out what time that is representing. Um, and I'm also going to do the time after and the minutes before the next hour. So take a moment to look at that clock um, and then write down the digital time that you see on that clock. And I'm going to do the same here on my end. So now when I look at that clock, I notice my hour hand is somewhere in between the three and the four. And since we're not at that four yet, I know it's going to be three something. And then when I look at my minute hand, I see that we are at 
325, which means we are 25 minutes past the hour. So 25 minutes past three. And then now I wanna think about how far we are away from the next hour. So I know that if I were gonna go five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 minutes before four o'clock, 35 minutes before four o'clock. Um, so those are our three ways to tell time, the digital, the time after, and the minutes before. And then we talked about how we read our clock. Um, let's do one more practice on reading a clock. All right, let's take a look at this and see if we can tell what time it is on this clock. And I'll give you a moment to think about it. A little bonus on the back of your sheet, you can actually write the time um, in the digital form, the minutes after, and the minutes before. Why don't you go ahead and pause the video right here, give yourself a minute to write the time three different ways, and then I'll come back and reveal the answers. All right, taking a look at this clock, I'm tempted to say seven o'clock because my hour hand is so close to the seven, but I know we're not at seven o'clock just yet. So it is still six o'clock, so I would say it is six. And then when I look at my minutes hand, minute hands, I know that the six is 30, so it'd be 35, 40, 45. So the time is 6.45. I can also say it's 45 minutes past six, and it's 15 minutes to seven o'clock and 15 minutes will be at um, seven o'clock. Let's take a look at what that would look like. So in 15 minutes, we would be at seven o'clock. All right, that is all for now. If you need to review this video, please feel free to watch it again. Um, and now that we have reviewed 14-1, time to the nearest minute, um, time to the minute, you are ready to start your practicing. Have a great day and I will see you back here for 14-2. Bye everybody.